this paper, I work collaboratively with various specialists from the divisions of pulmonary and critical care medicine, hospital internal medicine, radiology, cardiology, hematology, and infectious diseases as we discuss the diagnosis and management of patients admitted to the hospital because of COVID-19. My name is Dr. Raymond Rezonable, Professor of Medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Thank you for joining me as I discuss the highlights of the review article entitled A Collaborative Multidisciplinary Approach to the Management of Coronavirus Disease 19 in the Hospital Setting. This is going to be published in the July issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. As you know, the virus has infected millions of people worldwide. And while the majority of patients are either asymptomatic or have mild disease, approximately about 20% of patients with COVID-19 will have symptoms that are severe enough to require hospitalization. Most often, this is shortness of breath and hypoxemia. The management of these patients is the topic for this review. Upon admission to the hospital, these patients require the basic CBC differential. This will identify the level of lymphopenia that is prognostic for severe COVID-19. Patients should also have baseline renal as well as liver function studies. Markers of inflammation including C-reactive protein as well as ferritin should be measured as they can be used to prognosticate the clinical course of these patients. It is also recommended that patients have baseline measures of coagulopathy, including D-dimer. The chest X-ray findings of patients with COVID is typical with ground glass opacities, usually bilateral, as well as distributed in the periphery and in the basis. Findings that are atypical in radiographs should caution about the possibility of either superinfection or other concomitant pathology. The diagnosis of COVID is confirmed by the demonstration of viral nucleic acid in the respiratory specimen using the SARS-CoV-2 PCR. The cornerstone in the management of COVID-19 in the hospital remains aggressive supportive care. What does this mean? This means you have to give adequate oxygen supplementation to correct hypoxemia. You have to give hydration to correct dehydration and fluid uh, imbalances. And you have to give antipyretics for fever and analgesics to relieve any pain and discomfort. Is there an antiviral drug that is available for the management of these patients? Well, none has been approved by the FDA. However, remdesivir, our RNA polymerase inhibitor, has been demonstrated in controlled clinical trials to hasten clinical recovery by as many as four days. Other than this, all other drugs that are used for COVID-19 for the purpose of an antiviral efficacy should be done under controlled clinical trials. There is also the use of convalescent plasma uh, as part of an antiviral therapy. About 5% of patients will go on to develop the so-called cytokine release syndrome characterized by hyperinflammation with high levels of interleukin-6 as well as other pro-inflammatory cytokines. Many of these patients will go on to develop acute respiratory distress syndrome, myocardial injury, coagulopathy, as well as organ dysfunction, including renal failure. The management of these patients are discussed in this review article. The use of immunomodulators to counteract this hyperinflammatory stage is also being proposed, but none has been approved by the FDA. There are, however, several controlled clinical trials that are enrolling patients in order to define the safety as well as the efficacy of various immune modulators, most notably an IL-6 inhibitor, in the management of COVID-19. The vast majority of patients who are admitted to a hospital 
with COVID-19 will eventually recover. They will eventually get dismissed from the hospital back to home or other community settings. It is therefore important for us to also prepare them that they be dismissed to safe home environment. Clinical follow-up and monitoring post-dismissal is also important, and this is where telemedicine comes into play. It is important that patients, when they get better, since they are still at risk for possible complications, be connected to the clinical team and get monitored appropriately. All of these aspects of clinical care from clinical presentation to hospital admission and stay during the hospital as well as post hospital uh, uh, care are discussed in the review article. I would like to thank my multidisciplinary collaborative team represented by various uh, medical specialties in helping draft this article that encompasses a collaborative approach to coronavirus. 19 disease. I hope that you will find this article useful in the care of your patients. Thank you for listening. Be safe and stay well. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.